G'day, I'm Dr. Kev, and we're going to be showing how this is a suitable steering rack for a custom-designed sports car, even though the seller didn't want to sell it to us. Welcome to Car Design Workshop. Recently in this channel, we've been discussing how to design a steering system for a custom sports car. We've been looking at steering geometry, how much rack travel we need, uh, how do we design around bump steer, as well as the caster and KPI that we might want for our steering system. As part of this, I needed to start with a rack to begin the design process, and I was using this. This is, well, a fairly beaten up version of a mini steering rack, one of the original minis. This is pretty light and small, and I had seen it used successfully on Project Mosquito, another YouTube channel, and I thought it'd be worth giving it a shot. Someone I knew had a spare one that isn't suitable for use in a car, but I thought it'd be good to get some measurements and see how it would go. But the length of the rack wasn't very good, which has a really big impact on bump steer. Now, this is something that I could uh, work around. Uh, I could possibly have the rack mounted low instead of mounted high, in which case a shorter rack would have, would have worked. But I did put the question out to viewers on the channel about suitable racks and if they had any dimensions and the responses were very valuable. Now on the upper end, there were suggestions of using say a Woodward rack. Now I had looked into this before, uh, had some experience with Woodward working through Formula SA or Formula Student. They're a great supporter of those programs. They make a great product, but a little bit outside the price range that I was interested in. Andy RRR reached out and offered a model for our Lotus Elise steering rack and the Lotus Elise would have a perfectly sized steering rack for a project like this. Uh, the model was fantastic so thank you very much for that. Uh, the dimensions were, were spot on as, as should be expected. I mean a mid-engine car about the size of a Lotus Elise it's not a surprise that a Lotus Elise rack would work. The downside being that the cost of these was was reasonably high. Not, not as much as a custom rack but still not the sort of price that you would get from a normal donor vehicle. So it was always an option, but one that I was trying to find something a little bit cheaper. Another popular choice was to depower an MX-5 rack, where you would take a power steering rack, change the hydraulics, um, bypass them, and you can effectively turn it to a manual rack. Uh, the MX-5 is readily available, the parts are reasonably lightweight and low cost, and it was an option that I was considering, but I was trying to avoid a depowering a rack if I could. But one message really stood out to me from uh, Grip Goat, and this was the suggestion of a Subaru BRZ rack, or a Toyota GT86 rack. And what Grip Goat mentioned was that the power steering for, or the power assistance for the steering on a BRZ is actually an electric motor further up the steering shaft. So effectively, the steering rack at the, at the base, or be after that power steering system is a manual rack. Now I got really excited when I looked this up and for sale in Australia because you could buy these racks for about $220, $250. And at that price, I was willing to just get one in, measure it up and see whether it was suitable. But there were two problems with that. One was that the steering rack for a BRZ actually sits behind the axle or behind the front center line of the wheels. And for Project 171, the custom sports car, I'm going to need to move that rack forward of that front axle. And this means instead of buying a right-hand drive rack, I needed to buy a left-hand drive rack. Now, not a really big deal. These cars were sold around the world, but I did notice that the left-hand drive versions of these were about $700 a piece rather than $200, $250. Now that's still cheaper than a Lotus Elise rack, but it's starting to get to the point that that's not money I just want to throw away just to check whether this would be suitable or not. And that's where the second problem came in. Now we saw in the last video that we were joined by Harley Olson, a really talented engineer, and he decided to help out here and sourced a left-hand version of this rack for a much better price, so about $350. We thought, fantastic. However, the seller wasn't prepared to sell it to us. And it was quite an interesting exchange of communication between Harley and the seller, 
and I thought that we would do a dramatized version of that so that you could see that firsthand. So for this, I'm going to need Harley to help out so we get the full experience of the conversation. Hello, I'm from Steering Racks R Us. Thank you for your order. Please send me the VIN number so we can confirm compatibility. Hi, is this about the steering rack I ordered? Yes. Is your vehicle right-hand drive? Please send the VIN so that we can double check and avoid any issues. No, I need a left-hand drive rack. It's not for a standard vehicle, there's no VIN. Every vehicle has a VIN. This is a custom-built vehicle, it doesn't have one. This is where you would find the VIN. There is no VIN. Do you have any photos for our engineers to review? Not yet. We're designing the vehicle around the rack. It's just for mock-up at this stage. Well, we offer a local return service in Australia, but if the part is returned there, we won't be able to ship it back to our warehouse. Unfortunately, that would result in a significant loss on our end. Understood. If there's an issue, we'll take responsibility. I just need the left-hand drive rack. Then I need your confirmation that you won't request a return or refund. No problem. Send a waiver form if needed. Just your word is fine. I hope you'll keep your promise. Absolutely. Just please make sure it's the left-hand drive I selected. If you selected left-hand drive, that's what I'll send. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> In the end, the seller did take our money and delivered a product and we were pleasantly surprised to find that it was in excellent condition. It's a completely new part for half the price that we could have bought it from in the US. So the question is, what sort of dimensions did we end up with and how does it compare to the mini rack that we're trying to fit into, this, into the original design? So first, one of the problems with the mini rack is it didn't have a lot of travel. We only had about 90 millimeters of travel for 2.3 turns of the rack. Now the downsides of not having enough rack travel is that you need to ensure that your steering arm on your upright is smaller to give the re required angle at the wheels. Now this smaller steering arm means that the forces in the tie rod end up being a little bit higher and also any slop that you have in that system is going to be magnified. Generally when it comes to anything that's dealing with torques in a suspension system, you want to have the distance between those pivots as large as you can. Now this was workable with a mini rack, it wasn't a deal breaker, but the Subaru BRZ rack was much, much better. Here we were seeing a 150 millimeters of travel for two and a half turns of the steering wheel. And this gives us a lot of options in design. So we could either use this to slightly increase that steering arm length and reduce the loads and the effects of compliance, or we can just use it to make a faster steering system and maybe put some stops in the steering system instead. It gives us that flexibility that the mini rack didn't. Now, originally, I wanted to go for this BRZ for the rack length, for the eye to eye distance between the pivot points of the tie rods. For the mini rack, this was 600 millimeters eye to eye. And this meant that it was going to be very difficult to fit this in the system where it's aligned closer to the upper ball joint of the upright, which is where I wanted the rack to attach. Now I could make this work by lowering the rack where the lower wishbones are closer into the center line of the vehicle, but that was really something I was going to try and avoid if possible. And this is where the rack from the Subaru is almost perfect. This was 760 mils, which ended up being the same dimension or within plus or minus 10, 20 mils of what my initial suspension design uh, was. So it's almost perfect. Now out of interest, this is almost exactly the same as the eye to eye distance of the Elise rack. So I've ended up with something with about the same dimensions as the Elise, but at about a quarter of the price. So I'm very happy with that. Now it is a bigger rack than what the mini rack was. So the, the original goal of trying to use the mini rack was that it was lightweight. And the mini rack weighed in at 3.85 kilograms. Now the BRZ rack, quite a bit heavier with 6.27 kilograms. Now it's not surprising that it's heavier. It is longer, it has more travel, 
But we also see another couple of differences. The rack itself has got a bigger diameter than what we see on the Mini. So it's going to be a much beefier rack. It's going to handle a lot higher loads. And the housing itself is quite a lot more substantial. Now, nearly two and a half kilos of extra weight between the BRZ rack and the Mini rack is quite a lot. But it didn't look likely that I was going to be able to use the Mini rack anyway. It was just not big enough. So some of that weight we were always going to add. And in the end, I'm not too disappointed. At some point, if I decide to put stickier tires on this car and put it out on track, having a bit of a bulkier rack, a bit of a beefier, stronger rack is not going to be something I'm overly disappointed with. But I do need to be careful that in every choice that you have with choosing parts, you can choose the more conservative, heavier option. And if you keep doing that on every single part, then the weight of the car starts to add up quite a lot. Now, a minor downside with the rack uh, that I'm going to have to work around is I'm not a fan of where the mounts are on the rack. They're fairly big and bulky, and I'm going to need some sort of bracket, custom bracket to attach it to the chassis. I would have much preferred to have the simple bolt attachments that you see in the Lotus Elise rack, but not enough that I'm prepared to pay $1,000 extra to have those uh, mounts. Now with any part that is off the shelf and comes into the workshop, one of the best early things to do is to model it up straight away. And so that's what I've done with this rack. Now I didn't pull this rack apart so that I could model the internals completely accurately. It's just not needed. All I really needed was the external dimensions of this so that I know where the mounts are and uh, relative clearances of every, every other part. For much of this housing, the dimensions don't need to be incredibly accurate. In fact, if everything's slightly a bit bigger, it just means that we have a bit of clearance. The really important dimensions are the eye-to-eye -eye distance, the location of the pinion and the orientation of the pinion, and the distances between the mounts on the rack. Also, spend some time to get the mates right so that the pinion, as it's turning, is uh, right to the racks so we could make sure that our CAD model of the full car we can move the steering throughout its uh, full motion. So this meant a rack and pinion mount between the output shaft and the rack and also some limit mates so that the total travel of the rack is captured in that model as well. Once I'd done this I took the model from the rack and put it into the overall assembly for the car. Now, in order to accommodate this, I did have to change the suspension quite a lot. And there's going to be some future videos on some of the arm geometry that I'm aiming for here and what we're looking for in terms of camber gain, in terms of caster wind off, etc. And at the moment, the chassis that's in there is a placeholder chassis. Uh, I did make some modifications and how I might imagine mounting this uh, steering rack and maybe putting it inside the uh, chassis, but there's a lot more detail to put into this uh, model. So with the rack in position, it looks like it's going to do the job. Now the original goal is to use the existing tie rods in the steering rack, the ones that came with the rack, the original BRZ ones. Now I can change this if I want, either modify them uh, as they are or buy different ones that will thread into the rack. But if I use the original ones, it's going to push the track of the vehicle out by about 50 to 80 mils. Now I'm okay with that. I do want a small car, which means a short wheelbase and a short track. But even if with this extension of the track, instead of being 1300 millimeters, it might be 1380, which is still a narrow car. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Now from here, there's still quite a lot of work to be done. You do a lot of iteration when you're designing suspension and chassis systems of a vehicle. And that means you're going to try a lot of things and a lot of things aren't going to work. But that's the engineering process. And at this stage, I'm very confident that the rack that we have bought is going to be suitable for Project 171 moving forwards. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone that watches these videos, especially where you make comments. I do read all of the comments. I try to respond to them in a timely manner, but here it's been a massive benefit to me. I really appreciate the knowledge that's out there in the community and that you are willing to share that and help out with this project. 
So regardless of whether you like this video or subscribe to the channel, I thank you for your time.